Hello, my name is Archana. Welcome to training for Oracle Fusion Expenses in Oracle Financials Cloud. In this session, we talk about improved process controls for expedited expense reimbursement. For the capabilities covered in this training, we explain what they do, followed by more detail to explain how you can use them and what business value they bring. Then we explain what you need to consider before enabling these features in your business and what you need to know to set them up. The capabilities covered in this training will empower expense auditors with tools to expedite expense reimbursement. The expense auditor is the determining factor in whether an expense report is eligible for reimbursement. The more efficiently an audit is performed, the quicker the reimbursement is provided for employees, contingent workers, and corporate car providers. Efficiency in audit stems not only from the tools provided within the auditing task, but also from tools provided to end users. In this presentation, we will first discuss how the auditor's tasks have been enhanced with these new capabilities. Default original receipt check-in date, display employees inactive status, remove expense auditor restriction, return approved expense report, and add attachments to cash advances in any status. Then we will discuss ways in which end users are presented with information that ensures that expense auditors receive a complete expense report with little cause to delay reimbursement. These capabilities include disable company account segment, customize terms and agreements, and streamline entry of tax information. In some countries, original receipts are centrally scanned and the date that the image receipts are received is captured and stored. When the corresponding expense report is audited, it is no longer necessary to manually enter a redundant date for the original receipt received date. Companies decide if the receipt package check-in date will automatically default to the image receipts received date by setting up an audit rule. This rule exists on the Create Expense Report Receipt and Notification Rule page. The default receipt date rule enables the automatic population of the original receipt check-in date field when 1. Receipts are emailed or faxed by the user via Oracle Web Center Capture and Oracle Web Center Imaging Services, also known as IPM and ODC. Two, expense auditor receives receipts while auditing an expense report. And lastly, payables clerk receive receipts via the Manage Receipts Packages module in audit. Ultimately, this feature saves the expense auditor the added effort of manually entering duplicated information. The ability to automatically default the original receipt date when image receipts are received expedites the audit of an expense report. Automatic defaulting of the original receipt package date removes the need for the auditor to manually enter duplicated information. As a result, the possibility of data entry errors is removed while enforcing data consistency between the image receipt received date and the original receipt received date. When auditing an expense report or cash advance, a person's employment status can influence the expense auditor's actions. For example, short paying or rejecting an expense report will result in processing and payment delays, given that the termed employee will not have the ability to respond to a notification. When an expense report or cash advance is invoked for auditor approval, a message informing the auditor of the employee's inactive status is visible immediately upon entry to either the audit expense report page or the cash advance page. Not only is the message raised immediately, but the message includes the inactivation date for added context. When auditors know that a person has an inactive employment status, they have a holistic view of the life cycle of the expense report. Certain audit actions may impact the rate of reimbursement for the expense report, such as short paying, rejecting, or requesting more information. Given the nature of the situation, auditors can take action accordingly and judiciously. Auditors may be more precise in evaluating the impact of any actions they may take. By being more exacting upfront, 
the result will be quicker reimbursement to employees, contingent workers, and corporate card providers. When auditing an expense report, there is no longer a restriction on which auditor is able to complete an audit on an expense report. The only exception is when an auditor specifically requested more information. By removing auditor restrictions, expense reports that were short paid, rejected, or saved by another expense auditor need not be routed to the original expense auditor. Auditor history is preserved if a need ever arises to review historical information. Restricting subsequent audit of an expense report to the original auditor creates a bottleneck in expense report processing. Lifting this restriction increases the rate of audit completion. Expense auditors can quickly address any type of expense report that is pending expense auditor approval. More expense reports can be audited more promptly, thereby decreasing processing delays. Occasionally, circumstances require that an expense report that is approved and ready to be exported to accounts payable be returned to the end user. To support this need, expense auditors will have the ability to return an expense report to the end user during the window where manager and auditor approvals are complete, yet an invoice has not yet been created. When this occurs, a notification is sent to the employee alerting him to this action, along with recommendations on how to proceed. By introducing this behavior, it prevents export of the expense report to AP if the auditor knows that the employee or manager does not want it processed. The result is that the employee can make modifications, such as adjusting an amount or adding missing information. It will also avoid the risk of making a cash or credit card payment when there is a known issue. The most important benefit in returning approved expense reports is that when there is a questionable report, invoice creation is halted. The time and effort in addressing a questionable report after an invoice is created is reduced. Most importantly, payment of cash expenses to the employee or contingent worker or corporate card payment to the card issuer is eliminated. When the auditor can return a report prior to invoice creation, questionable reports can be quickly resolved by the employee and therefore expedite reimbursement. Expense auditors are able to add attachments to the audit cash advance details for cash advances in any status. Expense auditor may need to attach email conversations and supporting documents to a cash advance in any stage of audit, pre, during, or post audit. In cases of specific cash advance approval exceptions, auditors are required to attach supporting email approvals or any other documents, either pre, during, audit, or post audit. Auditors can now easily attach any supporting documents which are required for any post internal audit reviews. This allows the auditing process to be streamlined, thereby increasing the rate of reimbursement. Companies that would like to prevent users from updating the company account segment can hide the company account segment. The primary reason for disabling the company accounting segment is to prevent intercompany charges. This concealment applies to any place where the company account segment could potentially be updated by the end user. This includes the user creating an expense item in the desktop application, using a disconnected spreadsheet, or via a mobile device. By using the profile option, EXM Disable Company Segment, customers can ensure that the standard company account segment is disabled when a user is assigned the accounting duty privilege. By hiding the company account segment, companies can easily prevent users from charging to different company codes. Preventing intercompany charges eliminates the auditor's need to make accounting corrections. Audit can proceed without incident, increasing the rate of approval and subsequent reimbursement. Each business unit may have their own requirements related to enforcing acceptance of the company's terms and agreements. In addition, different business units may require unique text to reflect a specific business unit's acceptance message. With this feature, implementers can decide if they need to, one, enforce acknowledgement that the employee understands the corporate policies, 
This is presented in the form of a checkbox. Two, create unique terms and agreements messaging specific to a business unit. Three, define when specific messaging will also act as a link to the corporate policies and if this link is specific to the business unit. Acknowledgement of the corporate policies, terms, and agreements is in the form of a checkbox. It's independent from whether or not a unique message is displayed. In other words, implementers may provide a link to corporate policies without forcing the employee to acknowledge their acceptance. This setup can be applied to all business units or set up for specific business units. Providing unique text better supports any message that is necessary to present to a business unit. One single message may not be appropriate for all business units. Not only can the text that is presented be unique, but each business unit may follow their own requirement on whether or not they want to provide a link to their corporate policies. Implementers also have the flexibility of providing specific links that are unique to the business unit. To streamline entry of tax information, expenses can enforce employees to enter locations, merchant, and merchant reference, but prevent them from selecting tax classification codes. The expense manager can set up a system such that tax-related merchant details are required, while tax classification code is hidden when creating an expense item. Even if the tax classification code is set up as hidden during expense entry, if the expense manager has set up the tax classification code during the template expense type setup, this tax code will be used on the back end. The auditor can still see the tax classification code for the expense type if there is one set up during the template's expense type setup. In order to ensure more accurate tax calculation, recovery, and reporting, companies may require location, tax-related merchant details to be mandatory fields when employees create expense items. However, they may not want employees to have the ability to select tax classification code. This prevents employees from selecting the wrong tax codes, which could lead to incorrect tax calculations and reporting. In this section, we provide implementation considerations and setup instructions for the enhancements covered. The feature to default original receipt package check-in date is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is optional associated setup with this feature. Default original receipt package check-in date can be accessed using expense audit rules management duty and privilege manage expense report receipt and notification rule. The business processes associated with this feature are managed expenses. Before commencing setup, there are implementation considerations that need to be taken into account. First and foremost, implementers must consider whether manual entry of the original receipt date is required. If this is the case, manual entry must occur when auditing an expense report, checking in receipt packages, and emailing or faxing receipts. This may impact the rate of reimbursement. To enable this feature in the Create Expense Report Receipt and Notification rule, the implementer selects the value Default Original Receipt Package Check-in Date. The default value is Never. After the rule is assigned to a business unit, the feature becomes enabled for that business unit. Display employees in active status is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is no associated setup with this feature. Display employees in active status can be accessed using the audit duty role and privilege audit expense report. The business processes associated with this feature is manage expenses. Remove Auditor Restriction is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is no associated setup with this feature. Remove Auditor Restriction can be accessed using the Audit Duty Role and Privilege Audit Expense Report. The business process associated with this feature is Manage Expenses. 
The feature, Return Approved Expense Report, is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is no associated setup with this feature. Return Approved Expense Report feature can be accessed using the Audit Duty role and Privilege Audit Expense Report. The business process associated with this feature is Manage Expenses. The Disable Company Account Segment feature is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is optional associated setup with this feature. Disable Company Account Segment feature can be accessed using the Expense Account Allocation Duty and Privilege Override Expense Allocation. The business process associated with this feature is Manage Expenses. Before commencing setup, there are implementation considerations that need to be taken into account. If the feature is enabled, the company account segment will be hidden from the user when they create an expense report. If full accounting is enabled, then full accounting will take precedence over hiding the company account segment. You set up disable company account segment by creating a profile option. There are two steps involved in enabling this feature. Step one is to create the profile option EXM Disable Company Segment. Step two is to ensure that the value of the profile option is set to Y. As you can see from the screenshot, a simple SQL validation results in the implementer being able to select the value yes, while behind the scenes it maps to the letter Y. Customized Terms and Agreements is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is optional associated setup with this feature. Customized Terms and Agreements can be accessed using Expense Policies and Rules Administration Duty and Privilege Manage Expenses System option. The business process associated with this feature is Manage Expenses. Before commencing setup, there are implementation considerations that need to be taken into account. Implementers need to consider, do specific business units require unique messaging, which impacts what the user will see when he submits an expense report? Do specific business units require a link to specific terms and agreements, which impacts where the user will navigate to when they click on the corporate policies link from the welcome page, as well as when they click the link from the expense report? And do you require users to acknowledge the company's terms and agreements, which impacts what a user does for an expense report to be submitted? You can set up this feature, enable access to unique company policies, by first creating lookup codes for Aura EXM Terms Agreements. Next, you select the lookup code to be used for a specific business unit. There are multiple setup steps involved in enabling access to unique company policies. Step one, if companies require unique messaging for specific business units, then they will need to create additional lookup codes for the lookup type Aura EXM Terms Agreements. The lookup type consists of one default lookup code, Aura Default. Unless additional lookup codes are created, all business units will use the same message. Step two, after these lookup codes are created, it can be selected when the administrator sets the Enable Terms and Agreements system options to Yes when setting up system options for a specific business unit. When the value is set to yes, a checkbox becomes visible in the expense report. An expense report cannot be submitted until a checkbox is selected. Step three, if unique messaging is needed when the administrator selects a value in the related choice list, the corresponding text will either be the default value or the value determined by the lookup codes description that was set up in step one. Step four, lastly, companies determine if they would like the terms and agreements text to link to a URL. 
add attachments to cash advances in any status is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is no associated setup with this feature. Add attachments to cash advances in any status can be accessed using the audit duty role and privilege audit cash advance. The business process associated with this feature is manage expenses. Streamline entry of tax information is automatically available after the upgrade and does not have an opt-in option. There is optional associated setup with this feature. Streamline entry of tax information can be accessed using expense policies and administration duty role with privilege configure expense specific tax field. The business process associated with this feature is manage expenses. Before commencing setup, there are implementation considerations that need to be taken into account. First, implementers must consider whether the company wants to hide the tax classification code selections from their employees. This will impact the expense item creation flow. If tax classification code is set up to be hidden, employees will not see the tax classification code field during expense item creation. You set the feature up by accessing the functional setup manager and navigating to manage tax fields. Previously, there was no tax classification code control on the edit tax field page. So currently on the edit tax field page, implementers can select the value hidden for tax classification code if they don't want employees to have the ability to select tax codes when creating expense items. All the available values are required, optional, or hidden. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for listening. You can easily pause and rewind any of these slides if you require additional time to take in the detail.